why don't we just go ahead and get started? I'll talk about what this category is going to be in three, two, one, and go. Project 64 is weird with restarting. The thing with restarting this game is that it gives up a couple of random error messages that you have to click through before um, the title screen actually pops up. You actually have to have very specific settings in order for that to not happen. So what I'm going to be doing instead is a uh, 110 star, and this is actually the equivalent to 70 star from the original game. So um, this is basically going to be the any percent no major skips category, and I'm actually going to be playing this without that game shark code enabled, so this is just going to be uh, regular gameplay. So I'll get to talk a lot more about the game and less about the routing here. So this is the normal. So this is this, this is basically what nonstop skips out on. It basically skips out on having to collect that. Basically skips out on having to deal with this animation every time. Alright, so I'll go ahead and make sure I re-explain everything that I did for uh, those who missed it. So uh, this is the Zero Abyss. This is kind of the first water level of the run. Um, just to kind of go over uh, what this ROM hack is, again, this is a ROM hack made in 2011 by Lugma Lord. Um, and uh, here's another little bit of a skip where I'm going to be taking this crazy box into water and have it become dormant. And I'm going to re resurface. It actually reactivates, and I can use that to get up here without the metal cap. So I'm actually playing on the Fixed Warps version, which means in the original SM74, every time you collect a star in any level in any overworld, in every in any overworld, um, you actually get taken back to the same spawn point from every single level. In this version, this is kind of version 1.5, um, SM64 Pi made this version, and he adjusted it so that every single uh, level has its own unique warp point. Um, both for star exits and for death exits, which makes the routing in this category a lot easier to figure out, and it's also a lot faster, because you don't have to backtrack to every individual level. Okay. And the nice thing about this is now I can actually save, so game overing should be less of a problem, and I won't have to worry as much about lives. So when you swim into a ceiling hitbox in SM64, you get warped downwards. So by clipping through that really steep floor, I can swim into the hitbox and get down warped into this cave. And that skips a decent amount of swimming for that star. And I just have one more star to do here. And it's actually going to be uh, basically the same thing, except for me going through a different cave. So as this hack is early on in the days of SM64 ROM hacking, there's not really a whole lot to it in terms of like really cool game mechanics or anything. So most of what makes this hack special is just the custom level models and occasionally a new song. Like for those of you who might not know, but this overworld music is actually um, flip side from Super Paper Mario. So that's all I'm going to be collecting from that level. I'm not going to be getting a whole ton of coin collecting stars from any levels in this category, but uh, you'll still get to see a lot of interesting stars. So now this is Course 2, Skyward Slopes. This is actually the title screen theme from the original game. And uh, this level is uh, fairly small and compacted, and uh, most of the stars here are really big, like this one. <clears throat> And uh, something I should also probably mention is, again, I am playing this on a keyboard, which means um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the joys and uh, benefits of a regular controller, but it's actually not that bad, especially for this hack. This hack is totally playable with a keyboard. Here's a little bit of a mini skip. I can skip climbing around this entire section just by wall jumping here. The level design of this game is very, very open-ended to a lot of these cool sequence breaks. This is a very open-world-based hack. Alright. Now I actually am going to get the two stars over in the far area. These are two stars where it's super easy to die. Because uh, this hack, it's not as hard as the infamous Extreme Edition variant of this hack, which I'm sure you've all have heard of. But it is still pretty challenging compared to the original game. So really, um, the only major downsides to keyboard, one of them is sensitivity. So I don't have like the leniency of like barely nudging the control stick and making Mario move slowly. If, if I just tap a direction slightly, Mario will move. 
by a pretty big amount, so instead of, like, stuttering to get into position, you'll see me do a lot of, like, jumps in place to orient Mario. Alright. Hopefully I don't die here. Oh, camera. There we go. Uh, the camera in this hack is not very good. Um, again, this is early on in the days of ROM hacking. So, mo like, Kichu Cam does not work with about half- with about 90% of the levels in this hack. Which is kind of a problem, so a lot of these levels are going to be displayed with the Mario Cam C down. But even that doesn't always work super well. As you just saw there. And because this level design is fairly, uh, primitive, like I said, there's not really too much in the way of, like, events or whatever for these courses. So most of these stars are just going to be get to a specific point in the level, and there's your star. Still not bad, though. This hack is very uh, widely regarded even today, considering its age. Okay. So now I'm going to be heading off to... This is Bowser's Badlands Battlefield. This is actually the first Bowser level. Uh, it might not seem like it. And I'm actually going to kind of go out of my way here at the start to open the cannon. And this jump here is a little bit finicky. So you're supposed to actually use the cannon to uh, get to the top of the level. Um, I'm just opening it for one star. You don't actually need it to get to the top of the level, and I'm going to kind of show how you would do that. Because I'm just, the next star I'm going to get is over here. And um, in case you uh, missed it earlier, there are actually 151 stars in this hack. And most of the added stars come from these secret courses. There's a lot of added stars in these secret courses. And I actually would get red coins here, except red coins in red coin stars in Bowser levels in this hack also take you out of the level. So it's basically not worth it to get any of them. But most of the other uh, non-red coin stars are really fast, so they're definitely worth getting. And here's another issue where uh, with keyboard sensitivity, it actually comes in the form of aiming cannons. So. Aiming cannons is a lot harder with a keyboard than it is with a controller. Luckily, I don't have to do it too often in this hack, and the cannon shots I do have to do are not that hard. There's a pretty- this is probably the hardest one, and there's a pretty good visual cue for it. Alright. And, uh, yeah, you've probably seen this a little bit already, but, um... Lugmalor kind of likes to hide stars in very, very devilish positions. Uh, they're not necessarily hard to get to all the time, but they're usually just really, really hard to find. And so you kind of have to get really creative and uh, use alternate camera angles to find some of these stars. And this is a pretty good example of one. You would never think to look there unless you actually just kind of jumped off there or had the camera a specific way. Okay. And last but not least, we actually have to re-enter here to get the Bowser fight, because I still need the key in order to go to the next overworld. And having the cannon is nice, because I don't have to do that stupid series of wall jumps to get up here, like you do in Extreme Edition. And for the most part, the Bowser fights in this hack are relatively unchanged, they just have a couple of minor modifications. Also, these uh, block switches are going to be very, very popular, so you might want to get used to those. So with this version Bowser fight, the bombs are actually placed a lot higher up than they are in the original game, so I have to move Bowser a little bit closer. Like that. And uh, how I'm actually spinning Bowser is I'm just holding right and mashing left. And that actually works to spin Bowser really, really quickly. So I don't have to awkwardly go like up, right, down, left, up, right, down, left, up, right, down, left with uh, spinning Bowser. I can just do that. It works for some reason. Okay. So, I'm obviously not done with the first overworld because I only have 13 stars, but for now I'm going to head on to the second overworld. And that spawn point I just came out of, if I were playing the non-fixed warps version, that would be the spawn point for every single exit in this hack. So, imagine how tedious that would be. Alright. So this is the second overworld tower of the east. This is actually a secret level in disguise, which is why the coin display is visible. It would not normally be visible. 
and it also has a plethora of stars here, and all of them take me out of the level, as you can see, even though they really don't. But the nice thing about this stage is that um, when you get red coins here, um, the red coins you collect will actually persist um, when you grab a star, as long as you don't go to another level. So, while I'm getting the red coins here, I'm also going to make my way up to another star. And I'm not going to be getting every star here now, because there's some stars that it's better to save them until later. I'm glad that that bonk landed me back on the platform. This part of the this part of this stage can be kind of scary because I have to get over here. I have to get this red coin without falling down. I'm gonna play it a little bit safe. Okay. I messed up my setup there, so I had to play it kind of safe there. And then there's just a star over here. If I fell down there, I'd have to climb all the way back up, and that's very very slow. We're almost done though. I just have two more red coins to get. Is just over here. So that's all I'm going to be getting in the overworld for now, but there's still other stars here I'm going to need to collect later. So now I'm actually going to head off to the appropriately named Lava Switch of Eruption, which is just a really fancy name for the Wing Cat course. I'm going to walk up these pillars to get up here. Again, camera is uh, great in this game. And this first star I'm going to be getting here is actually really, really precise. I have to do a very precise flight into this tiny hole in the back of this tower. Okay, if you bonk doing that flight, you're just dead. So you really don't want to do that. And uh, last star, there's only two stars I'm going to be getting here of the three in total. And uh, for this next star, I'm going to do a tech skip. You, if you've seen speedruns of the original SM64, you know what this is. I basically jump off the tech switch and skip the text by just flying into the star like that. There is a red coin star there, but it's really slow, so I'm not going to get it. And uh, now I'm actually going to jump over here, and I'm actually going to head to Dust Switch of Identity, which is another famous name for the Vanish Cap course. Again, another instance of a star being placed in a really, really tricky location to find casually. You would never think to work here. Alright. So this star that I'm going to be getting is actually a normally a very big pain in the rear casually. But there is a very conveniently located fly guy here. Um, if I can land on it that I can use to just twirl all the way over to the star instead. Ah, I missed the platform. So now I have to slowly twirl to my doom. Yeah. The fly guy was not in a very good position, and I... I want... You, you really want to just twirl directly into the star, but if you don't, you have to kind of land on the platform, and it's such a tiny space. This setup should work. Oh, nope. Uh -oh. Now I have to try that again. Let's just go to land on the platform. There we go. Still a lot preferable to actually trying to walk across that thin pathway, especially with keyboard controls. Okay. Now I'm actually gonna go out of my way here to get the vanish cap switch. It's just kind of all the way over here. Okay, I don't know how I actually missed that. That should work. There we go. Yeah, just, like I said, just because this ROM hack is easier than Extreme Edition doesn't mean it's any less forgiving. Alright. I have to do these uh, this scary sequence of jumps to get back here. And here's another switching box to star. That I'm actually gonna once again skip most of. And 
Gardens. The other two stars are just kind of located at the top of the level. There's not much I have to say about them, so if there's uh, any donations that need to be read, now would probably be a good time for that. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I've got some donations here. Assuming the yes, host can hear um, me. Can you hear me? Alright, well, uh, I'm assuming I can be heard on stream right now. So anyway, yeah, we've got a uh, $100 donation from Anonymous. Thank you so much. No comment on that one. Uh, we also got one dollar from Angel Wind, who says, "Everyone watching and participating oh, in this okay, charity that's actually event is breathtaking. Thank you for making our first event wonderful, and hope we do this again next year." Star platform, but it's slightly faster to just use the boxes like you're intended to. Okay. Here we go. And uh, there's just one more that I need to get, and it's also at the top of the level. <laughs> So in case you don't know, the music here is the very famous uh, Song of Storms, but sometimes the song just kind of mutes for no reason, depending on uh, random factors. Like, if you just go into first-person mode in this level, the music will mute. Or, like, if anything happens, that makes the music become quieter. And that's the last star I'm going to be getting here. Basically, almost every single level here, I'm just going to get any star that isn't coin collecting. Alright. So now I'm going to head up here to where Frozen Slide is. And uh, this level is... The first level in the run where I'll actually be getting, and actually I think one of the only levels where I'm actually going to be getting every available star. And uh, it's very, very scary because every single surface here is really slippery. Meaning movement is not very straightforward. As you can tell, it takes Mario a long time to accelerate. There we go. Okay, I should be able to hear the host now. Hey there, Viper. How's it going? Going all right. Now I'm going to be doing red coins, another really terrifying star. So there's a couple of red coins on the slide here, and I have to be very careful to not miss any because backtracking up this slide just kind of doesn't happen. And this first red coin is a massive pain. And I'm going to do a couple of skips here on the slide. Yes, red coin's the biggie. If you miss that red coin, it's basically impossible to get it, and you just wasted all that time. Now, here it's actually possible to clip through this pillar and die if you're too fast, so I had to make sure I, got, I went to a little bit to the left of it. That was a really good level, though. Okay. And just like almost every other slide and every other variant of SN64, there is a really big shortcut I can do here. I'm gonna skip the entire slide by just veering off to the left here. Okay, I'm, I missed it, so luckily there's actually a very well-hidden star right here that I can just get as a backup. Again, a uh, star you wouldn't really think of finding unless you actually just fell there. So, don't exactly know what the thought process was there. All right, let's try that shortcut again. You do have to turn really, really wide for this to work. That should work, yeah. There we go. Couple minor hiccups, but we're good. Now, before I move on, there is a star on top of this hut that I'm gonna want to collect, and since I'm here, I might as well get it now. Timing your wall jump there is very difficult. Ah. Five frame window to wall jump doesn't always make it easy. There we go. So now I'm actually going to start doing some regular courses. So first off, we're going to go to System of a Town. And this level is very, very broken. So for these first two stars, you're actually supposed to go into the sewer system. That is entirely optional. Uh, hopefully. Oh, 
Okay, I was really hoping I didn't miss that star because I didn't zoom the camera in and I dived, which means I was past the point of no return. Oh. Well, there goes a couple of my splits. So here's another instance of a sewer skip. Um, this one's actually a lot harder to do. So I can wall kick up these walls. And then climb this slope. Oh, I messed it up. You need a very specific setup in order for this to work. And I just randomly opened the cheat window for some reason. Okay, let's try, let's try this again. This skip is kind of dumb. There we go. There we go. And uh, there's just no invisible wall here, like no out of bounds or ceiling hitbox to prevent you from going over the slope. So you can just kind of jump over here. And here's this star. Here we go. So that done first try can save maybe up to like 20 or so seconds. Also, the dialogue in this game, I'm skimming through most of it, but this dialogue is really hilarious. And this is where the stars are going to kind of become super duper fast. And not require that much brain power. Actually, this star does require a little bit of brain power. That shot kick can be hard to dodge, and there's just a box here that is actually a breakable box, which conceals another hidden star. Here we go. Again, that's just kind of what most of the stars here are like. And then here's this last star is going to demonstrate the somewhat poor collision of this hack. You can just kind of go through this chimney here. here we go. That's all I'm going to be getting in that level. So next up is uh, Haunted Factory. And uh, you, you might recognize the music in this level because it is actually the Frantic Factory theme from Donkey Kong 64. And uh, this is a level I'm actually going to be getting a lot of stars in. Um, I'm going to be getting every star here except for the regular red coins. So, you can, uh, you're supposed to hit um, some, a switch here to get up, to spawn some boxes so that you can get up here, but you can also just wall jump. And then you can manage cap to get through this wall. You're, you're probably going to see me try to intentionally ledge grab for a lot of ledges, and that's just another thing with keyboard controls. So, um, it's super easy to overshoot a jump with keyboard, and then Mario just kind of walks off the ledge because he has a bit too much momentum. So, you'll sometimes see me intentionally try to aim jump short in the, so that I don't accidentally die. Okay, so, uh... If you're kind of wondering what, how I'm going to spend time getting the 100 coins right here, because this level is so big and there's so many paths to go through, there's just kind of a hidden blue coin switch here that has like 80 blue coins. And so that's going to help me get the 100 coin star here in a fairly reasonable amount of time. I have to do this really risky jump here to get to this star. Right, you really don't want to get a first frame wall kick there or else you're just going to die. But that once again skips a lot of just traveling along a really thin path. And then there's actually two stars here that require me to get all the way to the top of the factory, but they are fast enough to be in the route, so I'm going to go ahead and get them. It actually doesn't take that long to climb up to the top of the factory. Alright. Since I was so rude earlier, now would probably be a good time for donations. Ha <laughs> ha 
that would be nice. A little bit of a fun tidbit, so these little pits in the ground are actually connected to lower rooms in the factory. And um, there is a way to jump from one of those lower rooms to this area and skip a lot of that platforming that I just did, but it's actually slower, unfortunately. It's real. It's a really cool sequence for me. But sadly, it just isn't viable for RTA. So yeah, like I said, climbing to the top of that mansion really does not take a lot of time. And then the last star here is just another star with the shell. I think this is the only shell in the game. I could be wrong, though. And this is just yet another star that's just kind of hidden in a very odd location. And uh, that purple stuff is uh, lava, in case you're wondering. So after this star, I'm going to get one more star from the... Tower of the East that's just kind of right next to where I am. And then I'm actually going to head back to the first overworld and do some cleanup. So I got a pretty tough series of wall jumps to do here. Okay. I, that wasn't how I intended for that to go, but that works too. So this star is in a bit of a weird position. It can be hard to get. And another thing about this being a level in disguise for an overworld is that I can actually pause and exit course from here. Which I can do right there. And that takes me back here. So I'm going to be heading over to the Toxic Switch of Danger next. This is actually um, the Metal Cap level. And this level is one of the only levels where I'm actually not going to want to play in uh, Mario in like Ijikam. Because this is what it's like. Um, this entire level is encased in toxic gas. So that causes the camera to behave really weirdly when you're in Mario Cam. And that also means you basically have to have the Metal Cap on the entire time. Otherwise you're going to be taking damage constantly. And I cannot believe I just did that. Alright, let's try that again. I'm actually going for the uh, red coins here. And uh, the red coins, this is a very small level, so the red coins are all kind of fairly compacted, so they're pretty quick to get. Although my metal cap is going to run out here in a second. Right, and so now I'm on a very strict time limit. There we go. Don't fall. Okay. Here we go. So that's probably one of the fastest coin collecting stars in the run. So obviously it's worth it. This is one of the oh, this is one of the you'll be getting every star. Now I'm gonna get a star that's near the top of the level. Now I'm pretty much perfectly. That's a very hard jump to nail, getting that double jump kick. So I need the metal cap for exactly one other star in this run, so I'm also going to hit the switch here, and I'm also going to try to do a tech skip with it. So I'm going to roll off, I'm going to actually uh, jump off this switch, and then try to land into the star that's in this hole. And I got it. So once again, that just skips the save text box there. And then this last star here is yet another star that's just hidden in a really terrible location. And it's even harder to find in this level because of the camera. But that's every star there. Okay, so now I'm actually going to make my way over to Dice Fortress. This is actually the first course in the game. But I couldn't come here before because I needed the wing cap for a couple stars. Alright. So for these first three stars, I'm going to do a switch box skip by just kind of jumping on the slope. And then making my way up here. Platforming up these pillars is not the easiest thing in the world. Right. And so this, I'm gonna get the hardest of these three stars out of the way first. So this box is really high up, as you can tell, and you really want to you want to start your flight from a really high location, and so that's the best place to start your flight from. That makes getting that star a bit of a piece of cake. 
So yeah, I don't know if it's actually possible to get that star capitalist. It probably isn't. And then I need the wing cap for one other star here, just to get to this observation tower. You can probably fit off a couple more donations if there are any. happy we're in this game. This game predates uh, Odyssey by like six years, I think. Yeah, Mario can't actually lose his cap in this game. There's nothing that can allow that to happen. There's no klepto or breeze or anything that causes Mario to lose his hat, which is nice. Alright, so that was all three of the Pillar Stars, and, and then this, these other two stars are kind of also in the same general direction. Um, the first one I'm gonna get of these two is actually a bit of a pain in the neck. It's a, this item box is in a very, very bad location. Okay. So I need to get up here, and then I need to reorient the camera. The spacing is just good enough for that double jump to work. So, that's... That's why that jump is so difficult. And then last star here is just a typical wall jumping lesson. So this is actually the first star in the game you're supposed to get, technically. That was a little slow. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to be clearing out the rest of Overworld 1. And so I'm actually going to head over to where the 30 star door is, and we're going to clear out the levels that are sort of behind here. But before I actually go into the next level, there's a bob on buddy over here with a cannon I need to open. Because uh, there's a level I'm going to want to access in a little bit, and to access the level, I basically need the cannon. And uh, this little pool here actually leads me to Stalagmite Cave. Well, there's a lot of pretty cool stars here. So this series of wall kicks skips a huge chunk of actual platforming. So that's one quick star right out of the gate. So I got, there's two stars here I'm going to be doing that are basically just two big skips back to back. We got another one coming up here. This one's actually a double lava boost. I could die here. So again, just basically skip doing everything the intended way there. To just make it over to where that star is. And then there's two stars in this little pit uh, in this general direction. And for this first one, um, this is something you actually never get to do in the original game. I'm actually going to be combining the wing cap and the metal cap, which, again, neither of those exist in the same level in the original game. But uh, this is a really cool thing. So pay very close attention to the wing on a wing Mario here. When wearing the metal cap and the wing cap at the same time, the wings actually have a metallic texture to them. Uh, that is actually an unused texture in the original game. And then you just need you need the metal cap in order to hit that underwater switch, and then you need the wing cap to get over to those boxes. Okay. This next star is just kind of over in this direction. So this is about this is most of the platforming that I skipped that I skipped earlier. I actually have to go this direction. 
because there's a couple of uh, swamps here that I can platform my way across to get over here. There we go. Here we go! And then the final non-coin star here is also just going to be... Uh, this one's just called Downwards because it's literally the lowest point in the level, basically. Let's see if I can grab the one up. Nice. Again, you can never have too many lives in this game. Luckily, since I'm not doing non-stop, I don't have to worry about going out of my way to farm lives or anything, since I'm going to be saving this entire run. I still would like to avoid game overing, but it wouldn't be the end of the run if that happens. So here is Ice Crystal Tower, the snowy level of this game. This is one of the few linear-based levels in this hack. And uh, actually, um, the stars I'm going to be getting here are going to be kind of weird, because uh, since most of the stars just kind of require climbing the level a uh, certain distance, um, I'm not going to be getting all the non-coin-based stars here, but I'm actually going to be getting the 100-coin star here, because there's a lot of coins close to the top of the level. And so, it's actually worth it to just get to the top of the star that's at the top of the level and then collect the coins along the way. Alright, so that first little jump I did there skips a little bit of pillar climbing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the 100 coin star. I'm gonna be skipping over a lot of coins, and that's just because, again, most of the coins I need to get are near the top of the level. Doing some from the swamp. Right, I'm a little short, so I'm actually gonna grab this red coin. Right, use the spin drift to make platforming here a little bit easier. Right, I really hope I can grab the red coin during this long jump. Okay, I might be a little short on coins actually, so I'm gonna see if I can get the fly guy. I should be good now. And I'm actually gonna get the wing cap here. And use the wing cap's uh, super high triple jump dives to scale these platforms without needing to actually enter flight. Right, I actually didn't need those two coins earlier, but I'm glad that I got them. Because then I, now I have two extra coins for this section. This is one of the few places in the run where like Keijo Cam is actually useful. It makes wall jumping this way easier. Because uh, Mario Cam was not designed for you to be able to do very high uh, series of wall jumps up. So for most of those, you actually want to use like Keijo Cam whenever you can. And so that's on Coin Star. And I'm right next to the star that's at the very top of the level. And then the lot there's so they give you a star for making it um all the way up to the top of the tower but then they also give you a star just for kind of going halfway up it i guess you could call this the future oh, i tried to side flip there but the direction the direction change got kind of eaten and by the time i was i tried to recover mark it was kind of too late i do want to show this jump off though Frickin' spin drift. Right. Luckily, climbing up this tower does not take that much time. Because uh, the movement in SM64 lends itself to a wide variety of uh, possibilities, and you just go really fast in general. There is actually another star from here that is theoretically fast enough to be in the route and actually is in the most optimal route, but I'm not good enough to do it because it requires doing a strat that's almost taskable. And uh, yeah, that's not really worth it, especially in a marathon setting, and especially as someone who's still kind of new to running this game. So that cannon I opened earlier is going to come into use here. Because I'm going to use this to get to the next level, Overheating Oasis. But first, uh, there's a Toad Star here. And Toad Stars function exactly like they do in the original game. You just talk to Toad, and he gives you a star. And again, there are three of these in the game. 
spread out across two of the three overworld areas. And there's actually also MIP stars. Except these MIPs don't try to run from you. I like how I just, I just clipped through MIPs there. So yeah, the MIP stars here are much easier. And you get a free star from them, so why not? Of course, I do have to make my way back, because uh, I actually can't get back to the level from there. So I have to take the cannon yet again. And uh, this is a this is an example of why the fixed warps version saves so much time. Because if I were playing on the no fixed warps version, on the original version, I'd have to go through that cannon and then uh, go back up here every single time I want to get to this level. And so that would actually make a couple of the stars that I'm going to be getting from here not worth it. I'm um, including this one and the next one. And then here's um, part of the reason why Mario Cam is so terrible for some areas, because it was once again not really designed to handle these super tiny spaces. So you kind of have to play in zoomed in Mario Cam, but even then it's very, very common that the camera will just get stuck on walls, which is really, really annoying. And sometimes this can even cause you to die in a few places. I've had plenty of instances in this game where I've made a mistake and died simply just because the camera was bad. Right, getting that triple jump is really satisfying, but it's also really challenging because there are certain parts of that that'll just cause you to slide. Right, so I have to climb here again because there's actually a star at the very top of this tower, but in a bit of a hidden location, again. Right. I don't actually need that one up, so I don't know why I grabbed it. I don't think I really lost time to it, though. And then there's one more I need to... So this, this is just kind of a... This is a really great example of... of a, you could call it lazy level design. I call it sort of early ROM hack level design. You get a star just for climbing up to the top of this pyramid. Which I just horribly failed. There we go. One of the easiest stars in the game, personally. So now we gotta go to these ruins that are supposedly under construction. This is actually a somewhat challenging start to get, because uh, Death Perception is not your friend. And you'll see what I mean here in a little bit. So I have to wall kick up here. That was very close to falling. Okay, wow. That was so unfortunate. Yeah, you kind of have to do that movement perfectly or else you're gonna fail it. Although maybe not as hard as that. There we go. And now the truck is nowhere near me. Oh. Convenient fly guy location yet again. Okay. That star is very hard to see where it actually is, so you're just essentially making a guess. Especially if you're trying to ground pound it. But now we can round things off with a pretty easy star. Because you're supposed to go through this temple and hit a switch to reveal a block to get to this star, but this temple is small enough to where you can just reach the star with a simple wall jump. Okay. So, there's a second MIPS, just like in the original game, you have a first MIPS that spawns at 50, 15 stars and a second MIPS that spawns at 50. So, I'm gonna get that one now. And again, it doesn't try to run from you. Now I have to actually make sure I save the game when I collect this star, because I'm actually going to reset the ROM as soon as I save the game. And uh, the reason why, I will explain later, but just know that I did have to do that in order for this route to work out. And uh, while I'm here, before I go to back to Overworld 2, there's actually another Toad Star up here. So the routing just kind of works out nicely that way. Yeah. Here we go. 
And I still have a couple of Overworld 2 stages left to do. I couldn't clear out- I couldn't clear out Overworld 2 earlier because I needed 50 stars to get behind this star door. Because, uh, this is the 50 star door. And this actually contains the entrance to the second Bowser level, Bowser's Aquatic Castle. But before I do that, there's one more star in the overworld here I need to collect. Here we go! So, coming up is actually a, uh, gonna, I'm gonna use a trick you've probably never seen before if you've only watched runs of the original game. So this is called, uh, frame walking. And it's actually e really easy to do with the keyboard. So, normally that slope is too steep for Mario to climb up with any of the regular slope climbing methods, such as back kicking, triple jumping, or doing a kick. But there is a... But you can still walk on it. So what you're able to do is this technique where you actually hold forward and then neutral on a pad in sort of a repeating pattern that's basically almost every other frame. And that actually allows you to climb up really steep slopes like that. And that's really easy to do with a keyboard because you can just mash a direction. If you're playing this with a controller, you'd have to wiggle the control stick back and forth in a really awkward way. Another switch in box to start here that's... A little bit challenging, casually, because that's a pretty tight timer to make. But other than that, it's not too bad. And now, I have a bit of a risk factor with this upcoming star, because um, if I fall on the way to this star, then I'm gonna lose a lot of time, because I have to do a really, really slow backtracking. And uh, here's another problem with uh, keyboard controls, and it's actually demonstrated really well here, is uh, getting specific angles can sometimes be really tricky because you only have, uh, essentially you only have eight directions to work with. So I have to really play with the camera there in order to make sure I can get a good enough angle in order for Mario to be able to make that jump. And the uh, last star here is just kind of off in this general direction. You can just do a triple jump walk kick here. You're actually supposed to go across. There's a bunch of other different platforms you're supposed to go across in order to get there, but that's also an option, and it's super easy. And now I can actually do the next Bowser fight. And the pipe here is very, very quick to access. Just go in here, and then there's a small little tunnel up here. And uh, look at that, here's the fight. Now this Bowser fight is somewhat tricky to do fast, but it's not like the previous one where the bombs are raised. Um, here, you just have a small, the bombs are kind of slightly raised, but you also have fire here that makes it hard to grab Bowser's tail right away. Made yeah, the fire hitboxes in this game are actually fairly lenient. So that is the second key, which will allow me access to the third part of the overworld. And something worth mentioning is that um, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that every time I've exited that level after getting a star, it showed Mario holding a key. I do not act—I did not actually have the key until just now. You actually do have to fight Bowser in order to get the key. It just shows it like that. So here's the last course I need to clear out here. This is Flowery Gardens. And uh, thank goodness I don't have to do coin collecting here because it takes a very long time. But this level is one of the harder levels to do um, without making any huge mistakes. So I can use a Fly Guy Twirl here to skip a massive chunk of platforming and get up there. There's a backup if you fail that, which is likely because if the fly guy, you need that fly guy to be really high up in order for that twirl to work, which is only really possible if you do that very specific setup. And then there's one other star that's in that direction, and this star is actually really, really tricky. It is very likely that I will fall here. Okay. 
don't know how I missed that. That ledge is thin enough to where you can't really ledge grab, so you kind of have to come at it with a lot of speed. Alright. That little ledge there is very weirdly slanted, so if you're just ever so slightly to the right, you're going to fall off, and it's a very long fall. And it takes a very long time to climb back up. Then we have uh, another star that involves climbing up this wand mill, or windmill. And there's some um, pretty finicky jumping I can do here. Skip a lot of climbing. So that star I mentioned earlier in Ice Crystal Tower, the snowy level, um, this next star would actually be the star that re one replaces, because this star is a bit long for the route. Because it is, it does entail a boss fight. So King bob makes a return in this game. Uh, he functions basically the same way as he does in the original SM64. Except now you have to fight him on this super tiny platform, and I've already screwed up the fight, because... Um, I got that fire cycle off. So if I throw him off the platform, um, then he accuses me of cheating. And you don't have a whole lot of space to work with. Alright, that went okay. I just got hit by fire that one time. Not ideal for the route, but it works. Okay. And this last star, I'm actually gonna- this strat I'm gonna be doing is actually slower for RTA, but it's not that much slower, and I really want to show it off. So there's just a- normally to get the star, there's just a secret little wall you gotta go through, but um, we're gonna be cool. And just do that. So I don't know why that works, it just does. You can just crouch slide there and you click through the wall. I believe in TAS that is actually faster, but not in RTA. Alright, now I can finally go to Overworld 3. And uh, <laughs> this cutscene's a little bit glitched. Uh, that is definitely where the key goes, don't question it. So here is the final section of the Overworld. So I'm going to start by going to Swampy Spring. So this first draw I'm going to do is actually the reason why I reset the game earlier. Entering Stalagmite Cave causes this Koopa the Quick Race to glitch out, in which Koopa kind of forgets his pathing, and therefore he will never actually finish the race. And this happens if you enter Stalagmite Cave in any way. And the only way to fix it is to reset the game. Otherwise I'd have to go out of my way to um, get to this level early and then go back, and that would just be really slow. So I just have to do it that way. And it doesn't lose that much time, and that star is definitely worth it. Also, yes, Koopa can just naturally walk up walls like that. Alright. Hey Viper, can I connect, can I connect for a second? Uh, sure. Alright, so I uh, just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update about some of the donation incentives that we have going on. Um, up after this is going to be a console verification run of Final Fantasy 1. Uh, I'm super excited for that one as well, uh, because I've, I've seen that one run before. Uh, but we have an incentive for that to name the four party members, uh, but we, we need that uh, done here really soon. So we're, we effectively need to uh, call that one in about five minutes. So at this point, if you uh, have been waiting to try to snipe a name, uh, you've got basically five more minutes left, and then we're going to need to finalize that one. Uh, in the meantime, this run right here uh, has some extra content as well once this one is done. Uh, it's an extra run of the game, the 10 star run, uh, which I would like to see. That one, uh, we still need uh, about $300 more, uh, and I know that we can do that. So uh, please, for those of you who are watching, uh, yeah, uh, 
if you can donate, anything helps. Uh, it's all 100% of it going directly to NAMI. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can donate as little as a dollar, and it will absolutely help the cause. So uh, please let your uh, friends and family know what's going on. You can share us with the hashtag ta- TaskGiving2020. Let's get the word out there. Thanks. All right. So you might have noticed that for that last star, um, I actually kind of ditched uh, trying to jump across the box, and that's actually because... Uh, uh, you basically need to have full speed in order to make the jump from the second box to the third box, and ledge grabbing automatically kills your chance of that, so I had to ditch it and try again. Alright, but now we have um, one of the worst stars in this game. Um, that was actually... So this... Okay, this the relative star of this in the Extreme Edition isn't easier, but this portion of it is because I have to make a very tight jump onto a very tiny platform. Not only that, but there is a heave-ho up there. Um, I think I'm gonna miss this cycle four. Yeah, there's that, that heave-ho up there. I, if you're not perfect there, you're gonna miss the cycle. So I'm actually gonna do a different star now. Um, that's also in this direction anyways. It's kind of hard to set up this triple jump dive. Alright. So, yet another really, really stupidly hidden star. That's just kind of in the middle of nowhere. So if I have really good movement for this Hepo star, I can actually make a really good cycle with the Hepo, because I basically need it to be stopped in order to actually be able to make the jump. Okay, that was probably fast enough, but um, I missed time the triple jump. This jump is very, very hard. Especially when you're giving yourself basically no time to set it up. That's a good position. really stupid star because if the heave ho is facing the platform even if you're not on the same level as it um if the flipper is facing you it will hit you even if you're on that lower platform and it takes you all the way down which is a massive time loss so i'm actually not going to be doing the courses in a numerical order here i'm going to be kind of taking a deep two over here Because there's another Toad Star here. This is the last Toad Star of the game. And there's also a Wing Cap here. Which I'm going to use to get to the next course I'm going to visit. Cliff of Wrath, which has the hilarious acronym of C-O-W. Um, hopefully you know what that spells. I get some moves in the chat. And this level's just kind of... A big cliff. That's kind of all there is to it. But some of the stars here are pretty cool. You got this one that's just kind of off to the side. You gotta do this little wall jumping course. There we go. Now I'm gonna try kind of a. Oh. And yeah, when you exit this level, even in the fixed warps version, the camera just breaks. Um, I don't know why. And that makes getting back into the level a little bit annoying. So there's a cool strat here that I just failed. I have a couple good tries at this. All right. So what I'm trying to do is kick over that fire in order to break that box. You're supposed to actually use the vanish, a vanish cap that's way high up in the level in order to do that. But if you kick over the fire in a very precise manner, you can break the box without getting burned by the fire. Which saves a lot of time, but it's somewhat precise if you don't have a good setup for it. Nice, I got back into the pipe right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah, ooh. 
So luckily I have a few tries at this. Uh, the setup for this is sort of clunky. There we go. Yeah, that just gets me in there. So I'm basically kicking over the right half of that fire. And the next two stars require me to climb up to the very top of the level. And um, unfortunately, there is not too much to say about these. These stars actually normally wouldn't be in the route if this weren't the fixed warps version. Because like I said, um, if this were no fixed warps, uh, keep in mind, I would have to backtrack to this level using the wing cap every single time. And uh, no one wants to do that. So, and we got a lot more stars in this route than we do with the no fixed warps route. And uh, this is going to be the last one I get here. There is actually a, actually a way to skip about uh, half of the climbing up this mountain, which would be which would have been useful for the previous star as well as this star, but um, I don't know how to do it, and it's really, really hard. I think only one person ever does it in runs. Alright. And last star of the level is just a fight with King Boo. There's Boos in this level for some reason. Alright. That's everything to do there. So before I continue on my spree of uh, cleaning out main courses, there is one more secret course I'm going to want to visit. So using this wing cap, I can actually fly all the way over to the Secret Course Champion Challenge, and I don't actually know if the left or right ear of audio can be heard here, so you might not hear any music in this level, um, because the music in this level only plays in the right stereo channel. Um, if you don't know, it is a sort of poor remake of uh, Eternal Star from Mario Party. But, um... This is a champion's challenge, this is just a little obstacle for us you gotta go through. Got a couple of nice little sequence breaks there, but yeah, short level. Okay, so here is a sunny beach, and it's at, this level is actually kind of a nice thing that I'm not doing though. 151 star run because uh, this level is probably the biggest pain in that run, but it's actually not that bad in this run category Because in 151 star you have to get the 100 coin star here um, Hopefully I can make this jump There we go And uh, this level has exactly 100 coins and the coin collecting here is very very hard So, uh, luckily, I do not have to do that in this category, because that star takes about, I don't know, six minutes. So yeah, definitely not worth it. And it's also just stupidly hard. Right, so this jump I'm doing actually barely saves any time, but it looks cool. So... Um, and because I'm on keyboard and don't have the easiest way of manipulating Mario's angle, I have to do this really clunky camera setup in order to get the jump to work. And then down here there's a big bully, and I need to be careful I don't accidentally touch this bully as it's dying, otherwise I'll get it stuck in the lava. And that's not good. There's a, you notice that purple switch over there, I need to actually hit that for this star. Because it opens a gate over on the other side of the level. I'm gonna try to make it over here without touching the water. Which 
which can be done by very precisely scaling the outside perimeter here. All right. Almost had it. Here we go! And then the last star here is just another example of a very <laughs> cleverly hidden star. So underneath that bridge there, you see that red coin over there. Well, if you, you may, when playing this game casually, you may collect the red coin and notice that there's still a shadow there. Um, I swam up a little earlier. Well, it's actually a star. Okay. I'll just climb up the stairs the normal way. Climbing up these stairs is one of the hardest things to do in this hack. It's so hard to do fast. Okay, here's a Molten Treasure Chest. This is another lava level. And, um, this is gonna be a lot of- This is gonna be a level where I get a lot of stars from it as well. So this star is really stupid, but once you figure it out, it's actually not that bad. You have to do a very precise flight into this hole, basically at cannon speed, in order to get up to that platform, because the h faster you're flying at, the higher up you can do the sort of swoops, and you need to be able to do a super high swoop in order to get up to that um, little uh, platform there, otherwise you're just not going to make it. So now I'm actually going to be doing the 100 coin star. Um, this is the final 100 coin star I'm going to do. And uh, this level has 255 coins, contrary to the previous level I just did. Which, believe it or not, is actually that's actually the highest coin score that can be saved in this game. And part of the reason for that is because you have a bunch of coins above each of these mountains where there's secrets that I'm going to be collecting. And you also have two blue coin switches. That gave a lot of blue coins each, so the 100 coin star in this level is basically free. And uh, I did get all the blue coins from that switch, but the timer didn't expire because I actually... Um, because uh, that actually activated both sets of blue coins, and that was, I didn't collect that set yet. Got a really precise flight here to get this fourth secret. So now I just have to get some blue coins from this switch, and I really hope I don't accidentally activate the 100 coin star mid-flight here. Okay, that's fine. So I can get the last few coins from here. And there we go. So yeah, pretty worth it 100 coin star to get. And then the secrets are just also pretty fast, since you can get them along the way. Oh, yeah, and also every single one of these um, door levels, if you want to call them that, has the same star and death exits, and uh, it places you right in front of the Course 15 door. So if I just tried moving, I would automatically open that door. So that's why I have to do a jump kick whenever I am, because I'm actually facing the door. So I have to do a jump kick in order to get away from it. And also the camera's terrible. For no good reason. Alright. Ceiling hitboxes extend a lot lower than they visually appear, so um, that flight is actually super precise. Here we go! If I had been almost any higher than that, I would have been crushed by the ceiling and it would have been an instant death, basically. Because, yeah, there's not a Koopa shell anywhere on this level. Here I'm going to take some time to open the cannon. Because uh, there's a star that is incredibly high up and basically requires cannon flight to reach. There's also- there's actually a bit of an exposed ceiling hitbox here that I could run into during this flight, so I kind of have to do some awkward movement here to hopefully avoid it. And I could ground pound that star, um, but if I was too low, then I would just ground pound underneath the star and fall all the way down it. I'd have to try that again, so for safety I just opted to fly directly into the star. 
last star I'm gonna get here is also in the cave that I got that first star from. And uh, this star is much easier to get. But now we're coming, now this is where I would say the run really begins, because these last 10 stars are 10 of the hardest stars in the run. Because now we're coming up on the spear levels, and uh, they're not anywhere near as difficult as they are in the Extreme Edition, but they're still really hard. <clears throat> so, actually, I'm, I'm gonna do course 15 first, this is Ombre Sphere, and this is actually the uh, previous level. This is actually a course 14, but upside down. It makes more sense when you see a course of 14. And this level is an absolute pain to navigate. But, luckily, you can get to almost every single star, basically, from the beginning of the level. Which is really convenient. It makes this level go by pretty quickly, but... This, these last two levels are basically just all about really precise platforming, therefore it's super easy to fall and die. Okay. So I'm just gonna kinda knock out some of the quick and easier ones. Oh. I didn't realize I was gonna get an extra wall kick there. And that's what I was talking about. Any missed jump is, very, is basically gonna result to your death. And uh, these levels are sort of based on the Stone Tower Temple from uh, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And uh, obviously this is the tower, Stone Tower Temple music. Wow, I did that twice in a row. This jump is not that hard, by the way. But the camera setup does make it a little bit awkward. Third time's the charm, maybe? Come on! Okay, I might just have—I might just actually do an easier setup for this because this is getting kind of ridiculous. I don't know why this jump is being so hard. I'm just trying to make it up there in two wall jumps. Okay, I'm—I'm I'm gonna anticipate a third wall jump this time. There we go. No, please. I am really sorry about this. I don't know why this is hard. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna try an easier setup for this. So this is the setup I'm used to doing. I've done a lot of- I haven't practiced that jump lately because I've done a lot- <sighs> I really do not know what I'm doing wrong. I could be done with the level by now, just for the record, because this level normally goes by really quickly. Alright. So, what I'm gonna do instead, is I'm just gonna jump down here. I normally do this during the 100 coin star. There we go. I only have to do that once, thank goodness. And I only, and I only did that so I can come up here and jump around these walls. That's not even the hardest star in the level. But I died five times to it. That's uh, not very good. My life count is at a concerning number now. Especially because there's a star here I could just die to over and over again. Right, let's not miss any more jumps here. Pretty easy one there. Now I got the two big ones. So, next star I'm going to be doing is the Intense Challenge. And I am not going to be doing this star the intended way, because although it could be faster, um, it is way, way harder. And basically requires a frame-perfect wall jump. That's not a first frame. So I'm going to do instead is I'm going to long jump over here. And then grab pound on this so I can slide and jump off of it. And then walk it up here. So I can get back to the main area of the level. Jump over here. And then jump down here and there's the star. That is not the intended way to get that star. Now I gotta do Flight for Sai. And this is a strat I haven't practiced in a while so I might fail it. Um, you're supposed to actually use an act-specific wing cap to get the star, but using some very precise jumps, you can actually get the star without the wing cap. Alright, I messed that up, but I didn't die. 
I actually don't know how to back this up. Okay. Well, let's try this. Yeah, I missed that. It, basically, once you mess up the initial setup, that's just it. This jump is very, very precise. There we go. Again, you're supposed to use a wing cap for that, but that's the cooler way. And now there's just one more main course left, and that is Luminium Sphere. This level is also pretty challenging. Mainly these first two stars. So for this first star, I'm actually going to be doing a bit of a sequence, a skip here that um, makes this star easier, but not by much. First try. Okay. All right, I'm actually going to grab this one up for safety. Yeah. That is very, very hard. But doing the level the intended way is even harder. And I'm actually going to do that uh, wall jumping section again, but this time to get that other star you saw me pass by. And this one's a bit easier to do. And once again, uh, Mario Cam is not really designed for doing a long series of wall jumps because the camera will eventually go underneath Mario, and uh, that's not what you want. So I switched to like DJ Cam for most wall jumps because it actually stays at a somewhat consistent height. So those are kind of the two trickier stars, but um, this entire level is really just about keeping your calm and not doing anything stupid. Alright. Alright, we got it. Now this star is interesting because... Okay, I'm really lucky I ledge grab there. I meant to do a jump kick, but I pressed the wrong keys. So this star is interesting because you're actually supposed to, to wall kick off these switch boxes, and uh, here's the problem with this. I have to make sure I intentionally delay my wall kicks there, otherwise I'm going to... If I get a first frame, then the box will actually push me downwards, and that makes it basically impossible to get up. And the camera said it makes it really hard to get back to the level here. There's two stars in I want to go this direction for. So there's actually a skip for this star, but it's slower. So I'm actually going to try to do the star somewhat the intended way. I actually haven't practiced this in a little while, so it's very likely I will fail it. So you can just wall jump up here, and then get that. Now I just got one more star to fulfill the star requirement, starter requirement for the last Bowser level. Yeah, we actually used to believe the skip was faster, but it's not. It is easier though, than doing that. And it's actually not that, it's actually not that slower by much, which is kind of annoying. So I can't know. Last star here is basically very self-explanatory. That's another jump that's super easy to overshoot. And that is all 110 stars I need to access the final Bowser level. So at this point, all that's left to do is fight Bowser and finish the game. So we're going to go to uh, Bowser's Crystal Palace. 
And for this level, you're actually intended to go through this very, very long obstacle course. Um, it's about two minutes worth of gameplay just to get to the end of the level and open a cannon so that you can go to the end of the level. But you can actually skip the cannon by doing a very precise series of jumps. Ah, I, I was a little too far back there. You're essentially doing that jump blind. Which is not cool. And also the angle is not exactly easy to decipher, especially with the control scheme I'm using. But even if I take like three tries on this, I'm still saving time over going through the entire level. Okay, I've never actually failed that part of the jump before, so... I could game over here. There is a 1-up I could get at the start of this level, but it's just not worth it, because you're probably going to die if you get it. life pressure. And then we're already at the end of the level, and before I go to the Bowser Bite, there's a one up here I'm gonna probably need. And this Bowser Bite is significantly different than in the original game. As you can see, the platform is already star-shaped, and there's also added fire, which makes things a bit complicated. So I actually have to make these throws. And it's just as bad as it is in the original game. So right there, I utilize a piece of tech where you touch Bowser's tail, which sets a flag that makes it so that whenever you're within a certain vicinity of Bowser and you press B, um, you actually automatically grab his tail. The latency on this is not easy to decipher. That should work. Alright, so time is coming up. It's going to be when I touch the Grand Star, just like in the original game. Alright. And time. So I'm going to count that as a 122.59, uh, that's a little over a minute behind my PB, and that run wasn't too great, so I could still PB by quite a bit. And the world record, by the way, is a 107, I'm still somewhat new to this game, and I have a lot of improvement left in 110 star, but hopefully that was entertaining to show off. I am really sorry again about all the tech issues, but uh, yeah, that was Super Mario 74. And did we meet the incentive for 10 star? Uh, here, let me do one last reset on that um yeah no i'm sorry we we made a good push but uh, weren't able quite to make that oh. <laughs> Hold on. i'll wait to see what the hosts here have to say Okay, it seems like we did not uh, meet 10 star, so uh, we're just going to go ahead and throw it on over to the next run. Thank you for watching. Thanks to uh, Dwango for having me again. I'm really sorry about all the tech issues I caused, but uh, hopefully my runs were still somewhat enjoyable. And uh, I will throw it on over to the host. <laughs>